Yes, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to another week with Fathers Who Care. Isn't this just a beautiful day? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm just happy to be here, to be seen and not viewed. I don't know about you, but I'm just rejoicing because I know this is another good day and another day's journey. Listen, thank you for tuning in to Fathers Who Care, or I welcome you to tune in to Fathers Who Care. And as you know, each week we try to bring to you, the viewing audience, uh, information and individuals who have just to know have been vetted who are true to the call who are committed to the mission and who has been particularly uh just in the trenches trying to make a difference for the least of us i mean it's you know we do all that we do in life but sometimes you can get jaded or you can get overwhelmed or you can get sidetracked and start chasing fame or fortune personally as opposed to looking out for the needs of the people uh with that being said i don't need to introduce but i will for the purpose of it you know our guest this evening is none other than our great commissioner commissioner richard r borkin of the cook county first district you know most of you all probably know him from a, a whole lot of things that he has done and i would be remiss if i even attempted to go down this huge uh list of accolades and and and, and things that he's done but i'm gonna put it to you simple uh to to them that much is given much is required and I'm going to say that because he has been given a lot. The Lord has blessed him, has guided him, has strengthened him, has shown his favor on him. And if he does nothing else but to continue to serve in the capacity that the Lord has called him to serve in, and that is whichever way the Lord lead, he will follow. So I, I want to say that personally that our commissioner here is, a, is a, of course, a scholar in his own right, a national statesman in his own right. I mean, he's a man of God. I believe with all all of my heart and I know it for all of my heart I know his passion of course he's a father I believe in my in my heart that he's a <clears throat> a servant for community change for social change environmental change and he has served this community my community has served this the seventh congressional district with our congressman for many many years uh he has a law firm he's partnered with a law firm he's been actively involved in all social issues and and certain changes listen i would be remiss if i tried to go down this list and i'd be probably taking up all the time for the show trying to do it but i'll, I'll put it to you like this he's a man that have been tried willing to be tried again He's never been denied, and he's willing to be tried again. I'm saying that this is a, a man that who believes in what he say. He says what he means. He means what he say. And he's really true to trying to bring about a, a change in our community, not just, you know, talking it, but he's actually actively involved in bringing policies and legislation and, and actually doing what he has to do to the powers to be to make sure resources come back into the, the first county district so that folks can say listen i do have an opportunity i feel that there's hope so i, I want to introduce to you all uh present to some introduce to others uh none of the uh commissioner richard borkin uh most of us call him richard or we call him borkin or we call him commissioner but, but we mean it with all due respect because most of us who know him we, we, we can do that because we know each other right. but uh, but for the purpose of the show this is our commissioner and we would appreciate it if you refer to him as such as Commissioner, commissioner Borkin Commissioner Borkin we want to first thank you for appearing on the show uh, it's been a long one <laughs> alright because we really wanted to, to get you on the show a while ago because of your passion right. and, and we know that you know you're, you're not short on things to do Really, you're not. I mean, folks think that you just sit down there at the county and that's all you do. No, no, no. That's so far from the truth. I mean, not only are you actively involved as a commissioner, a sitting commissioner, but you're actually a practicing attorney. Right. Among other things that you do. So what we want to do, uh, first of all, I want to tell you guys here that this is not uh, one of those shows where we're calling in to insult. We don't do that on this show. We call in on, on how can we engage our community in community organizing, civil engagement, and bridging the gaps in promoting a safe and drug-free community. We have some serious issues that's going on in our community, all right? Serious issues. I mean, young folks are dying at rec uh, 
at record numbers. Uh, folks are, are living in an environment where they are hopeless. Our seniors are afraid to come outside. Commissioner, I think you have some plans on the table. I've, I've read some of the things that you propose. I believe in what you propose. But Commissioner, before we go into that, we want to specifically call on you just to relax for a minute. Okay. And we really want to know, we know the commissioner side. We've seen you in, in, in downtown. We've seen you, you know, doing the work that you do and around the, the, the county. But commissioner, tell the audience, who are you? And, and, and really, what is your purpose for existing? I mean, you know, listen, my young folks told you how they felt. You know, they, they say you strictly on your business. You're about that business because that's what they see, all right? right? But see, they don't know you laugh, you, you have fun, you right. you let down, and you let you don't wear this all the time. I mean, you, you be in shorts when I see you. You know, we be up playing ball, so they don't see that all the time, all right? And so they think, you know, when they see you always down at the down at the board, uh, the county board, or when they see you, you know, all, all suited and booted, right. they think, well, you know, this guy don't want he don't have fun, you know? So tell us, Commissioner, who are you? And and what is your purpose for existing? First, Reverend Jones, let me thank you for the outstanding like work that you do uh, on behalf of Fathers Who Care and on behalf of the community. You do so much of uh, social engagement, uplift and motivation of young people. I really, really appreciate it. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You've made a real difference in, in our community and in Cook County. I am, look, charged by God, basically. I, I live by this, uh, this creed, and that is, uh, obviously, to whom much is given, much is required or expected. But also, in the Bible, they talk about what does God require of thee, O man? Mm. And he said to mm -hmm. do justly, to love mercy and kindness, yes. and to walk humbly with thy God. And that's what I live by. Look, we have some real pressing issues in our community today. In Cook County, we have too many people who are being shot in the city of Chicago. Too many people whose lives are being transformed forever, mm -hmm. forever changed. Too many people who are being killed senselessly by gun violence. And so, I mean, when you look at the numbers, I mean, the numbers are horrific. Isn't I mean, 2,400 really people is. shot to date. Mm nearly 400 people killed uh, last year 3,000 uh, almost 4,000 people shot we're going to eclipse that number this year it's wow. projected we're spending a ton of money on it and the thing that callers need to understand and the mm -hmm. people need to know is that 80% of those people who are being shot are African American and 80% of the people dying from gun violence are African American and oftentimes 70% uh, of that is black on black crime and so we have to figure out strategies to deal with these uh, what I call endangered communities and there are about eight to ten communities throughout Chicago that I would say are endangered you, and you, people who live in those communities are at risk of dying early or dying sooner than anybody else uh, at risk of being unemployed or mm -hmm. living in poverty, at risk of uh, having health disparities that uh, that 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 are just terrible, and, and and people living in third world type conditions here in America and in Chicago, it's unconscionable, unthinkable, and so we have to do all that we can as elected officials. Um, I consider it a, an honor to be able to serve the people. I'm not going to do it long. But I think all of us have some service in us that yeah, we ought to give Absolutely, that. absolutely. And so I consider myself a public servant, servant of the people. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do all that I can to lift the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations of young people, mm -hmm. especially. And how, do you feel, how do you feel about being a father? Oh, I love it. I love Why? it. I think it's one of the uh, greatest uh, calls or one of the greatest uh, opportunities to have in life to help shape, mold a young person, to help develop that young person into who God has called him to be. And so I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that my son is 10 years old. I'm mindful of the fact that he's like a sponge. Everything that he sees, he sort of emulates or mimics. And so I want to make sure that I pass along him the kind of values that my father passed along to me, a good work ethic, a respect for, uh, for the law, respect for teachers, respect for individuals, and ultimately respect for ourselves. 
and to love God Almighty with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so if I can do those things, then I, I'm in good shape. Wow, I told you. I told you. I told you who he was. I told you his passion. And I told you it's impossible for him not to share his passion. It, it's impossible because it, it is what it is. And when it's in you, ain't no way you can stop it. It's just the nature of the call. And you heard him, right? You heard him quote them scriptures, right? You did hear that, didn't you? I uh, just want to make sure there's no higher calling to serve, so that you know. There's no higher calling for mankind than to be able to serve. Listen, you're watching Fathers Who Care. Our guest this evening, of course, is Richard Borkin. Richard Borkin from the uh, First Cook County District. Our number here is 312-738-1060. 312-738-1060. The, the phone lines are now open. Our topic for this evening is how can we engage our community in community organizing, civic engagement, and bridging the intergenerational gaps in promoting a safe and drug-free community. I heard you. I heard the concerns that you had before. So we have our commissioner here to talk about. Uh, I know there's a, a seven-point plan I, I, I read about. I heard about some of the other initiatives that you're working on with the commission. I heard about some of the other things that you're doing in relationship to, to uh to mental health, right. trauma, and what I'm really, really concerned about, and I hope that we get a chance to talk about it, how can we engage more parents? Right. right. I think that's key. Mm -hmm. If we can engage more parents to stop trying to be friends with the children and become parents and give us some, you know, give the discipline that's needed right. to save some life. Come on, Carla, you on there. We got the commissioner with us, Commissioner Borkin from the first Cook County District. What's your comment or question? Um, I have a question for a commissioner. Okay, for Commissioner uh, Borkin. Yes. Um, I wanted to know if there any on your... We can barely hear you. Can you speak up? I wanted to know if there are you around that for you to hear. I apologize. You, you, you sent your... We can barely hear you, dear. So can you can you fix your phone or your television set and and, and call us back, please? Because you're breaking up. Anyway, Commissioner, let's do this here. It sounded like there was someone young on the phone, right? Let's try to have a phone call again. Go ahead. Caller, you on the air? Hello. Caller, you on the air? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, listen, the, uh, work the phone so that we don't get the static coming through, all right? Commissioner Booker, let's talk about some things that's going on. You got a seven-point plan that's coming up on how we can reduce violence in our community. Tell us about this plan. It's a seven-point plan that we introduced almost two years ago. Okay. It's a holistic plan. It's a plan that I think, if fully implemented, will help to reduce the violence that we see okay. in our streets. The first point of the plan is increased uh, resources towards parents. Okay. In other words, uh, strengthening the home. I think it's important for us to strengthen that home. If we strengthen that home, we'll strengthen the block, thereby strengthening the community. There are so many single parents who are having uh, kids and who don't really fully comprehend what it's like to raise a child. There are grandparents raising grandkids who need the resources uh, and need the help. And so we need to be that village. We need to be the help. Uh, to these individuals. All of these are our children. So when these children fail, we all fail because the, the truth of the matter is, is we all have an obligation to help the least of these. And so that's why I say okay. parenting Give me, is the first. Hold the parenting. Let's yeah. get the call out. They sound like a call coming through. I don't want them to miss okay. you. So uh, give me the call, please, and, and try to just make sure that the static don't come through. Call it you on the air. You're coming to question. Hello. Uh, I got a question for the commissioner. Yes, what is it? Okay, my question uh, is, you, uh, I heard the question about how can we bridge the gap, the intergenerational gap, and I'm, I'm, I just want to say that it's, it's going to take a lot of work because, for one, a lot of the adults are scared with everything that's going on out here, 
you know they're they're scared to to bridge that gap because a lot of a lot of adults feel like it's that younger generation that's causing a lot of violence and everything that's going on so what 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 can be done about that i'm glad you called with that question thank you so much for the question uh the commissioner is currently reading off a seven point plan to reduce violence so please let it go ahead commissioner i think it would go in the line with that yeah let me answer that sure Look, the children really are a reflection of us okay a child is going to be what a child sees hmm. and if a child hmm. doesn't see anything then a child doesn't hope to be anything and so the children really are a reflection of us and so if they're messed up that means that we messed up somewhere along the way as parents. But you don't have to be, so, stay that way, right? You don't have to stay that way. Look, we all fall down, but God challenges us to get back up. Mm. A righteous man, I think, falls how many times? It doesn't matter how many times. 70 times fall. 70. Yeah. You keep on getting back up and you keep on coming back. And so what I've done to try to help bridge this intergenerational gap as I've held these workshops, these town hall meetings, where I've brought young people in, I've brought law enforcement in, I've brought clergy and community leaders in, just for an opportunity for us to hear from young people. So often we talk to them, we talk at them, but I want to hear from them. I want to hear what it is that they're most concerned about. And I'll tell you what I've heard in many of these workshops. They want an opportunity, one, to grow up in a safe neighborhood. And that's a good they, one. They're, they're, they're tired of having to duck and dodge bullets and mm -hmm. hearing gunshots. They want an opportunity to have a job, employment. They want to work, believe it or not. They want to give back. They want to succeed in life. They want an opportunity to live what we call the American dream of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. And so young people at their the, the very core, they want these things. They want the same thing that every everybody else want and so we have to listen to them this is the way you break down barriers look or else they're gonna be listening to Jay-Z and all these other people and that's where they're gonna get their information from and well lack and, of and, yeah and it's a, it's an attack <laughs> on young people well let me ask this commissioner because because you we got another caller but I want you to, to get a chance to share these <laughs> these points I'm gonna right? read through them. would you do that yes yeah, so, so let's get the next let's get the next question okay. and then you flow with them take yeah. the question and then flow with it okay we got a caller? Is that a caller? Let's get the caller. You on the air, please. Um, my question is for Commissioner. Yes. I wanted to know, like, is there any job for the youth all year round this year? Oh, okay. Are there jobs for the youth all year round? This is what we're going to do. Uh, no, that's a good question. Let me answer. Please. Okay, well, go ahead and then well, you go ahead. Here, and here, here's the deal. That's part of some initiatives that I've introduced in the county board. I was dismayed to find out that there is no summer jobs program for Cook County youth, mm -hmm. young people. There's one summer Chicago, and that's run by the city of Chicago. Yeah. It is an inadequate program to deal with all of the youth of Cook County, or even all of the youth in Chicago. And so basically what I've done is I've introduced initiatives to say, one, I introduced it, believe it or not, an increase in the gas tax to provide for youth jobs and employment. And it wasn't that much. Bill. No, it's four cents increase. And guess On what? gas. And gas has been the lowest prices we've seen in a long, long time. And you cha you, you, you pursued that endeavor because you were you were seriously trying to create some, some uh, an steady, opportunity. A steady stream of income right, to hire young people. Okay. We look. Right now, we ought to be planning for fiscal year 17 right now. We ought to have a plan in place uh, for next summer so that we can hire so many young people, X number of young so people. So the answer is? So that, uh, so that these young people won't be on the streets and so that they won't get killed. The answer is we don't have a county jobs program. Uh, and, and I'm fighting hard to get one. But I, can, I need I, the I, help I, of the people in order to get it done. So I got what a you do. procurement idea on the table that will actually take take 1% of every procurement. We procure billions of dollars in contracts. A lot of the people who get them are out-of-state companies. They don't give money back to Cook County. Well, my bill says take 1% of the total contract value, put it in a youth employment and jobs training program so that young people can have jobs year-round. So the answer to your question is there is work being done in the commissioner's office to make this a reality. Unfortunately, with the changes on the state and the city, you see they gone. They shot. Literally, 
and, and the way things are going with the city, I, I'm just surprised folks are not. What I just leave that alone. But <laughs> trust me, I, 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 I'm kind of torn with a lot of things. But I got hope, and I believe. Commissioner, do me a favor. Read Please read. Points. Give us those seven points for, and then we want to talk about some other stuff, briefly about the uh, the ordinances and other stuff. But what's the seven points? So parenting, and you know, increasing parenting resources through faith-based organizations and professional organizations, strict enforcement of the curfew laws, uh, utilizing uh, the Sheriff's Police and Chicago Police Department, an expansion of drug courts, mental health courts, uh, charging individuals who are caught pulling the trigger and co-conspirators with domestic terrorism, expansion of utilization of the Sheriff's Police in high crime areas, stiffer penalties for people illegally in possession of firearms, and expansion of the gun by back program and a job training and a real jobs program for areas experiencing high levels of violence, unemployment, and poverty. Which is what you just got through talking about. Right. So here, because time <laughs> is moving so quick, and you, you can see uh, the information is, is real extensive, but I want to talk to you specifically on, on what can we do you know, there's this issue going around with folks who has the stigma associated with mental health, seeking mental health, or, or trauma. I, I'm personally traumatized, Doc. I kid you not. I, 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 I got a good face, you know, I pray a lot, and God gives me the strength, but I'm traumatized with what I'm constantly seeing with my young folks. How can we address this issue uh, or this stigma of mental health and trauma with our folks? I think what we have to do is we have to util utilize faith-based organizations. We need to put resources in the hands of uh, pastors, uh, priests, and others, because people feel comfortable with them, especially in the black community. Uh, people have, uh, you know, stigma towards getting help. They, 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 they feel like if they have to sit on somebody's couch, then somebody's going to call them crazy. Okay. But there's nothing wrong with admitting that you need help. Okay. And where the pastors are concerned, they're able to easily get them in because you see them on Sundays and they trust from their pastors and they trust them. Yeah. So tell me this, because the time is moving and they're telling me to wrap up. You got a you got a youth event in Maywood this week. Youth Takeover Maywood starting at 10 o'clock in the uh, Maywood community at 921 South. Ninth Avenue. It's, okay, it's that's the, that's uh, for young folks in Maywood if they want to be involved in an event that's on Saturday, correct? Right. Okay, and then you have a resource fair coming up. Well, let's go with this one. You're doing a faith-based and community partnership initiative with the West Side Ministers Coalition, right? That is correct. And then you got a resource fair coming up in, in, in September, right? This resource fair is actually going to be an opportunity to bring county government to the people. In other words, we're bringing every agency of county government to the people and give the people an opportunity to understand what that agency can do to help them. Listen, time is on, you know, time be moving like this when you when you're having fun, and I'm really having fun. So give us a closing uh, a closing comment on how we can engage people into being more actively involved in the community. We got about 20 seconds. Look, I want to encourage people to connect with uh, Reverend Jones, connect with uh, my office, uh, go on my website like me on Facebook, engage with us. So we have all sorts of activities for young people, seniors, and we want people involved in government. Look, you get the government that uh, you deserve because if you're not actively engaged, then that few that are, they're going to make the decisions for you. And so I encourage all of us to be engaged in government. Listen, I told you it was going to be good. And I told you it was so much information. I mean, we just just touch the surface and I hope the commissioner come back out with us again so we can we can continue to talk to him because I wanted to talk to him about some other things in relationship to the African American Male Commission yeah. that you're working on proposing and I know it's going to happen Absolutely. And so as opposed to the stuff that was happening in the state we're going to make it happen in the county not knocking the state not knocking what they done but it ain't working because it's not happening now listen commissioner we thank you so much for coming on the show we thank you for all the work you're doing we want to encourage you to keep doing the good work stay the course we know all is well and all will be well because we believe in we want to thank Amari and all the rest of the team for all you're doing up in there listen God bless you God keep you and we'll see you next week until then get in touch with Fathers Who Care FathersWhoCare.org we love you God bless you and good night good thank night. you so much Commissioner